What is going on guys? Today we're going to take these 2012 Fire Red 4s and transform them with this paint set available on our website into these perfect Red October 4s. The video might be a little bit long, but hang in there because if you want to do it right, this is what you got to do. Damn. So to get right into it, we're going to be using the 2012 Fire Red 4. You can use any other shoe. This is just how to make the exact replica that I am making. Whatever shoe you want to use, you apply the same exact steps. Any parts that are rubber or plastic, you're going to apply the same steps that I do on the heel tab and on the wings. So let's go ahead and jump right into the things that we're going to need to complete this custom. The paint set on my website that I'm using for this video, you can find in the link below. You will get the four colors matched from a Nike.com Air Yeezy 2 Red October. You will get four ounces of the body paint. You will get one ounce of the midsole paint. You will get one ounce of the toe cap paint. You also get one ounce for the sole, the outsole, and you will get my scratch resistant sealer included for free in that to protect all the rubber parts. We will be using the body paint for all of the white leather, the wings right here, the wings on front, the laces, and the sock liner, the back of the tongue, and the tongue as well. Also the netting right here will also be covered in the body paint. That's why there's four ounces because you'll use the most. Next, the midsole. You'll obviously just use on the midsole. It'll just be one solid color as well as this front bump right here. That's all we'll use that for. The soles obviously is going to be the rubber outsole. Then the toe cap is to imitate the suede on the Air Easy 2. That's this front leather panel right around here. The scratchers and sealer will be used on any plastic or rubber, so the wings up front, the wings here, the heel tab, as well as the entire outsole. You also need the Bulldog Adhesive Promoter or Adhesion Promoter, same thing. Um, they do make other brands like Duplicolor makes one. I know you can find that locally. It's $20. It will last you a very long time and it's very strong. It's preferred, but you can use another adhesive promoter. But a matte coating. I prefer Treehouse Studio. You can find that at HobbyLobby.com. You probably could get away with a Krylon or a different aerosol matte coating, but I just prefer this one. Acetone just for cleanup and prepping um, of the leather. Um, some brushes. I get asked what brushes I use a lot. It doesn't matter. You see I have a whole bunch of different ones. Actually, all these blue handle ones are from Walmart. Uh, tape, any regular masking tape or painter's tape works. Cotton balls are in the back as well as Q-tips just for cleanup. And then of course, midsole magic to prep the midsoles. I'm not actually gonna go over this step in the video as I have a whole entire tutorial on how to use this product and what all it can do. Okay guys, and the other accessories that you're going to need are going to be these orange laces that you can get from Angelus Direct. Lava orange or flaming orange, either one will work. Basically what you want is you want this bright orange color and then when you use the body mixed with the too thin, you're just going to spray that to get that last little bit of color on there because trying to go from these original white laces to match the body color takes way too many coats. And another thing that's not included in this kit that you'll need to get are the patches. These are the Horus patches and these are made to fit on the tongue or the same size right here. These are made by Herb Juice um, or Herbie as you may know him. Is on Instagram. His link will be down below to order these. You need to make a custom order. The ones that are listed on his website are too red. So message him and say, I need the patches in, I believe again, flaming orange. You should know what you're talking about or at least be able to reference my order and get those for you. It's about 20 bucks shipped and I get them sewn on. It's about five bucks a piece and they do a great job. Um, again, just check locally with someone. Then the only other thing that you'll really need is too thin. Again, that's by Angelus. You, you will need that to get the laces, the sock liner. I also use it to thin out my paint. All the paints that you get that are in the set are not thinned out. They come thick so you can use them however you like. You can hand brush them. You can airbrush them. In this video, I'm actually going to airbrush, but you can hand brush. But you'll want to add too thin if you want to thin it out and extend it a little more. Okay, so the first few steps, it doesn't really matter what order you go in. As you're basically stripping and prepping the shoe, So go ahead and remove the old laces. Tell me what's beef when you got a grill. grill. That's a motherfucking cookout. cookout. I'm in the club two step. Looking like I'm home. And then you'll need an X-Acto knife. And actually what would be easier is what is called a seam ripper. I have one, but I cannot find it. So for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this. You're gonna basically remove this tag right here. So later on we can get those sewed. So basically all you're gonna do is just find the little threads and cut. An X-Acto knife does work, a seam ripper is much quicker. But basically what you're gonna do is just get it lifted. Once you have that corner kind of bent right there, you can just pull it back with your fingers and start cutting the threads that are exposed. I just want a bag with the cash in it. This name is beast that you dad with me. I might pop a zen and just go listen. But I 
got no workers, so they pay me. I, I, I got all these bitches like I'm... And then you're left with this, all these threads sticking out. All the other boys serve the salt. That ain't what you want. They call me T Ross, serve the raw. Serve the raw. All I do is make crack and serve the hard. Got it I keep them coming arm. back. I'm the Ross nigga yeah, alive. Yeah, yeah. All the other boys serve the salt. That ain't what you want. They call me T Ross, serve the raw. Serve the raw. Alright guys, so now that we have the midsole strip with midsole magic, the next thing we're going to do is work on all the plastic pieces. I start this way because I think it's the hardest part and it's easier just to get it out of the way. Um, you'll see later in the video why we chose to do this first. So we're going to focus on the wings, um, these little wing tabs up front and the heel tab on both shoes as well. So the first step, we're just going to take some acetone and we're going to clean that up of any dirt and debris that may be on there. So this first part, we're actually just doing it onto the rubber just to make sure we clean up anything, like I said before. And then on this next part right here, we're actually gonna switch over to the leather, just like you prep any other leather shoe. You really wanna make sure you do this part thoroughly. Overdo it, don't underdo it. Um, nothing ill is gonna happen if you over prep it. So make sure you use acetone and cotton balls and really get the step as it's very important to get that paint to hold on and be flexible so it doesn't crack when you start wearing these customs. All right guys, so now that we're done prepping and we're done cleaning these, um, another little precaution I like to take, this isn't mandatory, it just kind of helps me, is using a sand block. You can get this at AutoZone, Pet Boys, Napa, Walmart probably has them. Just a regular foam sand block. This one is 320, it's definitely a fine grit. Um, I would rather have a higher one, so if you can get like a 200, that would probably be even better, but this is all I have. This isn't key, don't go out if you don't have it. Just use whatever you have, you don't need to buy something. And just go ahead and sand this. While we're sanding this, we just want to make sure that we get the outside and the inside. So you can see I lift up the back tab and get behind there, as well as the small wings in the front. You want to get the sides, the top, the back, the front, all of it, just so we get a good application of the Bulldog Adhesive Promoter. Okay, so now that all these parts have been sanded, we're going to go ahead and just go back one more time um, with acetone cotton ball and that's just going to be to pick up all the debris that the sanding did cause Young all right guys so the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and tape up all the parts that we're not going to be spraying with bulldog and right here on these areas i would rather under tape than over tape because if you over tape and you have tape that's up on this plastic and you build up those layers of scratch resistant sealer and paint, you're gonna end up pulling it off and it's gonna be super uneven. So it's okay if there's a little bit of buildup right here. I would rather that than it be pulling the paint and the scratch resistant sealer off of this when you remove the tape. So that's just a little tip. All you care about is making money, you don't care about a fucking soul though. You just fluctuate our dollars up and down at your convenience like a fucking pogo. You been screwing everybody on the label on the low and they don't even know though. So good luck, Jaren, Dizzy, Hopper, Swizz, I'm going solo. This is the basics of how it should look after you tape that up, getting behind and underneath all of those plastic pieces. So now the next part is basically covering up the other areas that are exposed right now because we're going to be spraying the bulldog and then we're going to be painting. The best method usually behind this is just to use tape to build up to here and then I go ahead and use a plastic bag and wrap that. So I'll go ahead and speed up and show you that process and any tips that I have while doing that. I'm on my night job. Flew the posse out to Rome and won't tell you about no Basquiat's. Don't want them. Nigga word to Selassie. I'm zoned and I'm on my Okay, so now what I like to do, some people use these bags already, and this seems like a stupid tip, but a lot of people don't know it, and it took me a while to figure it out. I used to try and finagle this thing and get it to sit just right and cover the areas I wanted, and then one day I thought about it, that if you actually just put the whole entire bag over it and tie it, you can just cut out the areas that you want. It's much quicker, so I'll show you that. How does it feel to wake up to the feeling of knowing that I don't give a fuck what you feeling? I didn't know my life was so appealing, so high that I'm touching the ceiling. Looking down at it with the attitude of I miss you happy at it, hoes can't find us. I'm just mad at the fact you tried to blindside us. Lying to yourself like you can ever outshine us. You can lick my nuts while I'm playing prime us. All right, guys, so now that we got them both taped up, it's actually dark outside. I don't feel like taking the camera out there and filming it but you're gonna use the Bulldog Adhesion Promoter. 
You can use other brands as long as it's an adhesion promoter. 3M makes one called Sand Free. All of them have very similar instructions, so just follow exactly what's on the back. That's all. There's nothing special that you need to do for this. It's just the instructions they have on here. It's usually put on a light coat, let it dry for a minute or two, put on another coat, let it dry three to five minutes, put on another coat. I usually do two, maybe three coats, and just let them dry in between, and you're going to come back in, and then I'll bring up the airbrush for you. All right, guys, so now after getting the adhesion promoter on there, you can see it. It's pretty glossy. It's how it should look. I'm going to put it on the inside and on the outside. I focus mainly on the outside, but I get at least a coat or two on the inside to be safe. And today we're actually going to be using the Jacquard airbrush color, the white. That's just because I don't feel like mixing up the Angelus with too thin and straining it. Um, it just comes out of the brush and since it's a base coat, it doesn't matter too much. And these parts don't really flex. It's just to get it to stick and hold. Alright guys, so my primary focus here is getting the insides first. That's because if I let go of this wing, it's actually going to hit that plastic bag and the tape will come off. So right here, I'll go ahead and grab the heat gun on a lower medium heat and just dry that paint so I can let go and not worry about it coming off. And then I go ahead and attack the top right here on that wing and go ahead and dry that as well. But I focus on the bottom first. This will be the same on both sides. Again, I'll pull back that heel tab as well and do the same thing there. I'll get behind it where it contacts the shoe. I'll dry that with the heat gun, then let it go, and then I'll focus on the top. And it's also the same for those little waffle pieces on the front. I'll pull those back and get behind it, dry that with the heat gun, let it go, and then do the outsides. I'm gonna skip the part where I do the outsides because that's self-explanatory, but I still spray it, and then I use the heat gun to dry it when I'm done. All right, so as you guys saw, that was one coat of the white. The airbrush started sputtering a little bit right through here. You can see also a little bit on the heel tab, but that's okay. Um, we're gonna do like two or three more coats till this is not black anymore and it's almost full white because we don't want that black to come through when we put down the red October paint. All right guys, so that's two coats. You can see it's starting to get a little bit more full. I'm gonna go back and do one more. I think that would be good. All right guys, now that we have the white base down on all the plastic parts, we're gonna go ahead and start with the body paints. You can reduce this with too thin if you can't get it to come out of your brush, but the paints that I use from Angelus are already pretty runny, so it should come out fine, but there's really no ratio. Um, it's just your airbrush, your tip, your compressor, your PSI. I'm not gonna go into details as that's a whole different thing and it literally is different for everyone. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this in my airbrush. Again, you can hand brush this as well, um, I just prefer to airbrush it. It's quicker. Um, it goes on smoother, especially on all these ridges and getting it in there. But you can use a brush. Um, same concept. You'll just brush it, dry it, let it cool off for a minute, brush it, dry it, let it cool off, and so forth. But I'm going to go ahead and use the airbrush on this. So make sure you shake it well because it can separate. And the colors will break down. You want to make sure you get the full mix. The process with the body paint is the exact same as what you just saw with the white base coats. I focus on the inside of all the wings and the heel tab and I air dry them with the heat gun on a low medium setting just so when I let go it doesn't hit the plastic bag and the tape that we have and the paint will come off. It's literally the exact same process. We just want to make sure that we do light coats with the body paint and build them up. I only show you one coat here but I do three coats to get a full coverage for a base layer and I'm working on the left shoe right here and my method is working on the left shoe heat drying it on the inside and then doing the outsides and heat drying it and then I switch to the right shoe. While I'm working on the right shoe and doing the exact same process, it gives enough time for the left shoe to cool down that I can go ahead and go back and do the second coat, then switch over to the right shoe, do the second coat, and then go back to the left shoe and do the third coat finally. It's better to do lighter coats and build them up. Again, if after three coats you don't have a completely solid base, that's fine because we're going to be doing plenty of layers of scratch resistant sealer and the body paint back and forth. So we'll have plenty of time to go ahead and cover this up. And then actually after we're done with the scratch resistant sealer and the body paint, we're going to be removing all this tape and then we're going to be working on the body. And the body is the exact same color as these wings and the heel tab. So if that oversprays, we're going to get more full coverage. So that's completely fine. Don't worry about that. Remember just to take your time, repeat this two or three times, maybe four times to get a pretty solid coat and then you can move on from there. Again, I just show you this one shoe, but it's the exact same process for the first two or three layers of body paint. So the next part, now that we have all of our base paint down for the Red October, we got a nice solid full color here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and do the scratch resistant sealer portion. This is the bottle that you will receive. This is the two ounce, but I actually have a personal bottle right here um, that I use just for projects. This is actually the eight ounce. We have a new label, so it'd be a bigger label. But you'll receive the two ounce here, and I'm gonna go ahead and mix this down with some water so I can get it to go through my airbrush. Um, you can hand paint it, but it gets a little hard 
and the little waffle pieces here, especially with all the texture back here and here. So I'd rather airbrush this so it lays flat, but you can hand brush it. It's going to be a little tougher. Um, it's going to be the same process again. Watch our scratch resistance sealer video and you can see how that's done. Um, but we're going to go ahead and load up the airbrush. The only tip I can give you, every airbrush is different. So I just do mine until I get it to flow. The only thing I change that I normally don't do with paint is I turn my PSI all the way up so I can get a very strong push of air. And that usually helps get the scratch resistant sealer flowing, but you're definitely gonna have to add some water to this, to your airbrush. You're gonna have to play around with it. Um, I can't really troubleshoot that because every brush is different. All right guys, so again, you're gonna start to see a pattern here for these next couple steps. It's just gonna be the same thing over and over. Again, we're using the scratch resistant sealer. It's the same method as if you have used a scratch resistant sealer before. If you have not, again, I'm working on the inside of the wings, the parts that will be touching the shoe, and I dry those with the heat gun. So when I let go, it doesn't come off when it hits the shoe in the bag. We're going to go ahead and do one coat, just a, a light to a medium coat, air dry it, let it cool off. And then we're going to work on the outside of the shoe. And we're going to go ahead and build this up. Same way with the body paint, we're going to do about three coats here. You're not going to see it because it's clear. So just spray it. You'll notice a few times here I have some problems with my airbrush or I'll spray it on the table or on my finger just to make sure I get a good coat going. Again, I use a pretty high PSI to get this flowing. If you're having trouble, add some more water and shake it up just to get it flowing. Um, but a bigger nozzle is better on your airbrush. So a 0.05 um, or a 0.35 would be fine. If you have like a micron or something really small, it might not work as well. So you maybe want to use a bigger brush. Another tip is to make sure you clean out your brush as soon as you're done with this step because this stuff can dry up. I mean, it's scratch resistant. You've seen the videos before and the protection it has. Just imagine that getting stuck in your airbrush. It is not fun to clean out and I've actually broken a brush because it's been too hard to clean out and I just, it was too much to deal with. So again, I'm just going back and forth here. I do about three coats total. I don't know if they're all actually in the video, but it's the same process three times over. Again, I stopped the video. That's why the colors change here a little bit. You'll notice it's from a different time. Stuff's moved around on the table. But again, it's the same process, just three coats with the scratch resistant sealer. Then we go ahead and go back with the heat gun just to speed things up. You can use a hair dryer if you don't have a heat gun. A hair dryer is going to take a little bit longer to dry. Or you can even air dry it. But I would really recommend you get something for the inside wings that I'm working on right here. Because letting that air dry while you're holding it is going to take about 10-15 minutes. And that's just too long. So just take a heat gun or a hair dryer just to speed those up, especially on those inside parts. And um, yeah, just get cracking. All right, guys, I'm not going to focus on this too much because, again, this is just going back with the body paint and you're going to see us do it a few times where we go body paint, scratch resistant sealer, body paint, scratch resistant sealer. The exact same process. This is just the second application of the body paint. So technically, this is the fourth, fifth and sixth coat of body paint. Alright guys, so after all those layers, it's absolutely essential. I know it takes a long time and it seems like this custom will take forever, but that is the longest and most lengthy part. So now we're just going to go ahead and remove all this. There's not going to be much done besides the tabs, obviously, um, but we're going to go ahead and remove this as we don't need any of this anymore. Okay, now at this point, around all these edges, if you didn't tape very well, and you notice that the tape and the paint and the sealer mix are actually connected, you can use an X-Acto knife just to be safe to go ahead and cut along those seams to make sure it disconnects. I take my time when I'm taping so I don't see any areas where it looks like it has built up, um, but again, be the better judge of that and just take your X-Acto knife if you need to. So maybe like on this corner, just make a little incision and cut so you know that the tape and the paint aren't connected because when you pull the tape it could pull up some of the paint and rip this and all that hard work would be gone you have to restart or it wouldn't be even um, so yeah my only area I would maybe be concerned with on myself is just right here on the heel tab and I'll pull it apart so I can see underneath it and just run my knife under there and again on the other side I'll do that on this one just so I don't forget as well Push it down, like I said, and then run your knife underneath and make sure you get a clean cut. All right, guys, now this process is pretty self-explanatory. We're just removing the tape in the bag 
from the shoe. Again, any areas where you think you might have a little overlap where there's some paint buildup on the tape that might pull it off when you remove it, just use your X-Acto knife. I'm just showing you on this one shoe for the length of the video. I wanna shorten this. It's the same process for the second shoe. And just be careful when you're removing this because again, you can pull up some of that paint and sealer. And that's a lot of work as you saw to go back and fix. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to worry about the mesh areas and then we're actually going to worry about the sock liner here. But first thing we're going to do is we need to add some white onto these panels to get rid of that black because if we put down this body color right here on top of this it would be much much darker. It will still be a little bit darker just because this is black underneath and it's going to come through. But we're going to go ahead and tape off these areas around it and spray some white paint through the airbrush. Again you can hand brush this. You can use any paint you want, but for this example, I'm going to use the Jacquard, the airbrush color, the white. Um, the opaque is what I'll be using. I actually just use it because it flows very nicely and it's easy. I don't want to mix up any too thin and Angelus white paint. You can use Angelus. You can put it through your airbrush. Just add some too thin if you need it, or you can just hand paint it. You could probably even use the Jacquard, just the Neo opaque, the thicker one, which you do not airbrush. You just hand paint. But again, in this case, just for simplicity, I'm going to go ahead and use the white opaque since I already have my airbrush up and running, and I'm just going to blast all these. So first, we're going to go ahead and tape around these areas. Again, I'm only showing you one shoe, but it's the same process. We're just taping up around all the mesh areas. You don't have to get a super clean, tight tape job because it's just going to be white, and it's just going to be on the white leather that will end up covering with the body paint anyway. So just a loosely based tape job. Do the same on the left shoe and the right shoe. Do it around the netting on the tongue and on the side the best you can. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just go through it kind of quick. It's not really that detail oriented right now. Okay, so you guys will notice that I taped up around everything through here. It's not super precise again because the overspray doesn't matter. You'll also see on these portions actually did not worry about trying to get in here just because it's a pain and the overspray in here doesn't matter as much because you don't really see this part and this inside and this white right here on the tongue is also going to be the body color so you don't have to worry about it waste all the time again if you're hand brushing you might not even need to tape it all but if you're airbrushing I'd at least tape up these areas all right guys and for this again it's the same type of process we're just using the jacquard to go over all the mesh it's going to take two or three coats. I'm only showing you one here again to save time. You're going to do two or three coats till it gets a pretty full white. It will never be completely solid, but you want a pretty good white base. And again, you'll notice here I'm going at a couple different angles because if you turn the shoe and look from the bottom, from the side, from the top, from the front, you'll notice you'll still see some black. So make sure you hit it from all those angles because that's very important because different viewing angles are going to give you different perspective of the shoe and you want to make sure you cover all of that. Again, with this, you can use the heat gun in between each coat. Again, I'm only showing you one coat on each shoe, but after each coat, you can use the heat gun or hair dryer if that's what you're using. Let that dry, cool down, and then go ahead and hit it again. Again, two or three coats is what we're doing here, and we're going to go ahead and skip forward and show you the end result just to save some time, but it's the same exact process two or three times over. Again, how many coats you need varies on how heavy you're going, but again, light coats are a lot better than heavy coats, so build them up. Alright guys, now that we have the white down on here, we're going to go ahead and start on this mesh. I like to start with a brush, even if I am airbrushing the rest of the shoe, just because there's a lot of angles. If you saw when I was angling my airbrush to get all this white in, there's just a lot of different angles. So if you didn't take your airbrush this way, you would look at the shoe like this and you'd see a lot of black here. So we want to just make sure that we hit every angle from up, sideways, down, and across, just to hit all those little areas, because when you're wearing your shoe, different people are going to see it from different angles. So using a paintbrush really ensures that you get it all over as opposed to an airbrush which can only spray in one direction if that makes sense. And I'll go over with the airbrush at the end anyway just to get a smooth even surface. But just to start I like to use this. So again this process is just repetitive. I'm going to do it once on this shoe and I'm going to end up doing three coats total not four. Just go for a pretty solid coverage because again we're going to go over it with our airbrush. But again focus on those directions and make sure there's no white spots. Again pull back the seams where the leather meets the mesh. Again that's an area that will flex and you'll see white if you don't do that. So really get your brush down in there and just repeat this two or three times. Again I'm just showing you on the one shoe and we'll go ahead and show you a comparison of what one coat looks like and then you can go from there.
If it's looking a little bit light right now, that's fine just because that's one coat. You don't want to go too heavy in the beginning because you want it to be flexible when you're moving, especially on that tongue. The side panels don't really move too much, but that tongue does quite a bit when you're putting your shoe on, when you're walking, um, when you're tying your laces, you want to make sure that that's really durable. So here's a visual comparison of the left shoe with two coats and the right with one coat. We're going to end up doing three coats total, but this is so you can see how thick your coat should be. All right, guys, so now that we have two or three coats down on here and it's nice and full, again, we're going to be painting the body with the airbrush after this, so we're not even going to take these areas up, and the body color is the same color as the wings, the heel tab, and this netting. So if it's not completely full, don't worry. You just want a good solid base, so this is good enough if you can see that, and we'll be covering it more later. But now the next step that I like to do is to worry about this sock liner. Since this is red, it's going to be a little bit darker since we are going to be using the body mixed with Too Thin. But if you look at the actual Red October Yeezy 2s, you'll notice that the sock liner is a different material and it's a little bit different color and it's a little bit darker, so it actually works out perfectly. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to remove the insoles, and that's just because you don't want overspray all over the insoles. So it's easier just to take them out and set them to the sides. And then we're going to go ahead and tape up these size tags right here. So for that, we're just going to use some tape, the stickiest tape that you have. This is just regular masking tape that I use for almost everything. And I use my X-Acto knife just to get the lines right. But any straight edges that you can line up, go for it. That little poison got some power. Born broke, but I'm a die rich. Lonnie for a nigga counterfeit. I'm just vibing in the wrist cards. Alright, so now what we need to do, guys, is take the Angelus Too Thin and mix it with the body paint. My Too Thin is actually in this. It's an old alcohol bottle just because this top is easy to pour as opposed to using this big jug right here. So, I don't really have a medium. One to one is about right, but if anything, I go pretty heavy on this. Maybe a one and a half to one or two parts Too Thin to one part paint. You can't really have too much Too Thin just because we're putting it into fabric so it won't really matter. It might come out a little more thin, but I like it really, really heavy on the too thin just to keep it as soft as possible. You can use the GAC 900 if you're comfortable with it here. I always just use too thin because GAC is pretty expensive and it's one less product that I have to order. So just go ahead and put that into an empty cup. Again, I just kind of eyeball it and then just You know, I go pretty heavy with the too thin, so it's just an estimate. It doesn't need to be perfect. If you're going to go heavy in one direction, you want more too thin than you do paint. If you do too much paint, your sock liner is going to end up really crusty and it's going to be hard and it's going to be stiff. So just shake that up really well and then we're going to go ahead and put it into our airbrush and we're just going to start spraying all through there. And as you probably guessed, this is just a repeated process. There's really no technique to this. You can really go heavy with the paint, but we're going to end up doing about two or three coats total. I'm just going to show you on this one shoe what one coat looks like and then you let it dry for about anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour and then you go ahead and heat set it with your heat gun or your hair dryer like I said, either one doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and repeat this about two or three coats until we get the entire back of the sock liner full. You can see right here I'm cleaning up a little bit with the q-tip. That's just because the overspray got onto the leather and I just don't want to deal with it later. So just clean it up because it's still wet. Um, you don't have to, it's just something I like to do. Alright guys, and here's what one coat looks like, or one pass if you will. I didn't worry about this, we'll get this and we will get the sides and all of this later. We're just going to focus on this back. It's been uh, about four or five hours and this is dry to the touch, it's still soft, good to go. I'm going to go ahead and hit that with another coat, just want to show you what one should look like. Alright guys, so now that we have the sock liner completely full here, you can see the color difference between the tongue and the heel. We now need to get the sides right here. And what I like to do personally is I like to do the sides first, you can do them both. And then after that we'll go ahead and go back and do the lower portion of the tongue. And then once we get the lowest portions of the tongue, we'll go back and we'll do the top of the tongue. That's just because it's drying. And if you were to spray this whole entire tongue and try and pull this tongue back with your hand, you'd keep touching this and get paint all over. So it's just easier for me. So we're going to focus and go ahead and tuck this tongue down and focus on these sides right here. All right, and this is the same exact process as we just did on the sock liner, except we're focusing on the sides. 
You'll see I'm having some trouble with my airbrush here in a little bit and I'll actually put a little skewer in there to keep the shoe apart because I'm having to pull back the needle chuck myself because it was getting clogged and stuck. So I end up putting something in there to spread the shoe apart but all you need to do is just pull it back and make sure you spray in there. Get a nice full coverage. Again we're going to do about two or three coats till it matches that heel sock liner pretty well and just continue from there. You can use your heat gun if you need to as well. Alright guys so now to see why we tape this up we'll go ahead and remove this. Go. And that's pretty good. Actually right at the top you can see there's a little bit. So just take a q-tip and just wet it with your tongue or with water or whatever. And you should be able just to rub it that. The more majority of and the majority of that will come off. There you go and that just looks so much cleaner instead of that just being blasted red and just not looking good um, that looks really clean size tag is still there so you can still see around it and it just looks like it was never really customized it looks like it that's how it actually was all right guys so i already did one so you don't have to watch it both but we're pretty much just taping up the midsole here we're gonna go ahead and move on to the midsole next um, i need to cut out this front part because i forgot that but just tape around this however you want you can use an exacto knife to cut it i personally don't just because i don't trust the knife i'd rather trust my hand putting down the tape so just go ahead and take that off, and then I go ahead and just put a plastic bag around the shoe just so I don't hit any other areas, but I'll show you that on this shoe right here. One third with the drop down, icy chain with the watch now, bone piece full of rocks now, niggas squint when they watch now, leveling up to the top now. I'm on a new level, I'm on it, I'm on it, I'm on a new level, I'm on it, I'm on it, I'm on a new level, I'm on it, I'm on it, I'm on it. All right guys, so the next step that we're going to take on these after we have them taped up is to put down a white base coat and that's just to even out any of the tones on the midsole. This one's a little bit worse because the black smeared as you can see. So we're going to get that all white just with a good base. I'm using the Jacquard airbrush color. You can use Angelus. Um, one of the two brands I prefer. Any other brand isn't going to hold up and flex very well. These are made for shoes and leather, things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and airbrush this. You can hand brush it. It doesn't make a difference. So again guys, same process that we were doing earlier, anytime we're doing a base coat or paint, there's a lot of repetitive steps, it's just on different areas on the shoe, so it does take time, but it's very simple once you get it down. We're just basing this with the Jacquard White, as I said, and I'm using the heat gun lightly in between just to speed up the dry time so we don't have to wait. And I'm going to go ahead and do this for about three coats, I think is what I end up doing. Just go till it's pretty full, it doesn't need to be pure white, but you want to get some of that unevenness out, and that's what we're really shooting for here. On the road to riches, listen, this is what you find. Alright, so the next step is the actual midsole color. I'm gonna be using this big brush here. And we're just gonna be focused on the midsole. We're gonna do quick long strokes, you'll see here. Um, you just wanna be really light and just go really quickly over the midsole just to get it as smooth as possible here. Right here, I'm just kind of picking some stuff off the midsole. Um, again, there's gonna be some chunks in this because that's how Angela's paint works. They might want to strain it, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and just dip right in. And you'll see me kind of pick the midsole here and there throughout this video clip because there are some chunks in there. That's because I did not have a strainer that was working. I forgot to order one. Um, so you don't have to strain it. It just helps so you don't have to pick out all this stuff and smooth it out. It just makes it a lot easier. But again, this is just a repetitive process. I'm going to do about, I think it takes about five or six coats with this midsole paint just because it's a little bit thinner and it's hard to get that color full on here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do about five or six total coats to get this coverage. But same process, you can use the heat gun in between switch to the other shoe, paint that, use the heat gun, switch to the other shoe and just keep going back and forth like that until you're done. And just for a visual so you guys know what to look for, this is what two coats looks like for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one more coat and see where I'm at. Now that the midsoles are full, but I ended up with about six coats on this. It's a nice full color. We're gonna go ahead and take the matte clear coat. The brand doesn't really matter. Um, I haven't had any issues with any of them. Again, these are light coats, so it's not like this is supposed to be holding your midsole together. The prep is what's gonna make it so it's flexible and durable. This is just to get rid of any shine. So instead of taking the camera outside since it's dark out, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this off the camera. Again, it's just like the instructions. I do one light coat. I wait about two or three minutes and then do another light coat. There's really nothing to it. Just really light sprays. You don't need a lot of coverage, just a quick coat. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and grab our X-Acto knife and we're gonna go ahead and cut around the edges here. And this is just so the paint doesn't peel up again since we built up so many layers we don't want that tape to pull and rip off the paint and all the work that we've done. 
I'm just going to show you this on one shoe, then I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead to the other shoe as it's the same process. But just take your time, make sure you get a really sharp line. I usually recommend using a new X-Acto blade just to make sure that it is really clean and precise because you don't want to mess this part up and remove any of the paint that you just put down. Alright guys, so as you probably saw earlier, um, I went ahead and skipped to the midsole without doing the back of the tongue or underneath. We already have the sides and the sock liner. Um, we also need to get this right here. So to get that area, now that we have this painted and we don't want to get any paint on there, as you can see on this shoe, I've already done it. I just taped off the areas that I don't want to hit. Again, this leather on the front and the patch and the tongue doesn't matter because it's the same color. So I went ahead and just taped that up. So now what I did here, I actually took a little skewer that you can just buy at the grocery store or Walmart or wherever. Um, they come in like a pack of a hundred for like a dollar and I literally just take it and break it in half. And it's perfect to put through the little eyelets. You see that there? That's perfect. Um, the thing about this is you don't actually need to get all of the tongue all the way up to the front just because you can't pull it out that far because these little bands right here actually hold it down in place. It's just how the shoe's designed. So just pull it beyond what you would normally see just to make it look clean. Again, it's not going to be all the way down there. It's not going to be perfect, but we want to at least make it so when you look in the shoe or when you pull the tongue forward to put your shoe on that it looks like it's all done. So as you probably guessed, we're going to go back to the body and too thin mixture. And we're going to load up our airbrush and just get to spraying. Alright, and there's no real need to draw this out. This is the exact same process as the sock liner. I just forgot to do it. Normally I would do the back of the tongue when I'm doing the sock liner, but I did forget. So this is the exact same process with the too thin in the body. Do one or two coats, let it dry, heat gun it. Do another one or two coats, let it dry, heat gun it until it matches the sock liner. Come and get it from the source. Fuck with all the word of mouth. Go to stay running practice at my house. Alright guys, so we got the sock liner completely done and we're gonna go ahead and start with the body. The first thing I like to do is actually stuff the toe boxes just so if there's any creases or anything, we get every single piece of the leather when we're painting. Really dish it out. Come and get it from the source. Fuck with all the word of mouth. Go to stay running practice at my Alright, so now that those are stuffed. I'm going to use an airbrush for most of this, but the first coat I actually like to use just a paintbrush. That's just to make sure all these little lace threadings and all the little cracks and stuff get filled up. Sometimes an airbrush, you kind of have to angle it to hit it differently. With a paintbrush, you get more full coverage. So I'm going to go ahead and do one coat, just really light for coverage with the body. So for this first coat, you want full coverage. You can tape up the midsole if you're afraid you can get it on there, but it's okay to get it on the sole because we're actually going to clean that up later and we'll be putting down different paint to cover it. But the midsole you definitely don't want to hit. I've just been doing this for a long time, so I don't need to use tape, but use it if you do need it. Um, we're really trying to focus on all the stitching on this, like I said, so we can really get that full coverage. But you want a good coat all over just to kind of get that color solid, but we're really doing this for the stitching, so it's kind of focus on that. You don't need a heat gun for this because doing one coat on the body should take a little bit, but you can see I do it right there behind the heel tab just so when I let go of that heel tab it doesn't stick to that paint and dry. Um, but do this on both shoes um, and we'll go ahead and catch up after I finish both of these. Hi right, guys, so now that we got the first coat down with the brush like I showed you, we can go ahead and move on to the airbrush, but first we've got to tape up some areas. You can tape up before you do the first coat. I just am pretty good with the brush so I don't have to worry about it and I didn't feel like doing it as in a time crunch. I did realize that I actually painted this, which is okay, because this will be a base coat for the toe cap and it'll work out just fine. So I'm going to try and avoid this area, but if I get some spray on there, it's not a big deal. I just wind up covering it with the toe cap. Get all this taped up on the areas that we don't need, um, basically the outsole and the midsole here. So as you probably guessed, we're doing the exact same process that we have been doing here every time we do a coat. We're doing the body paint here. We're airbrushing it after the hand brush coat just to get more full coverage. Going to do light coats here. I end up doing three coats total, but I'm only going to show you this one for time's sake. You can see when I go behind the heel tab and the wings, I use the heat gun right away just so when I let go of that wing or the heel tab, it doesn't hit the paint and cause a smudge or get the paint lifted off there. So that's really the only technique you need to do. Other than that, you can just spray. Feel free to hit the mesh, the wings, the heel tab. It's all the same color. So repeat this two to three times or until you get full coverage, and then we'll move on to the next step. So this is after three body coats and now we're going to go back and work on the sides of the tongue. I choose to do it in this order because on the side tongue it's actually going to get a lot of the overspray coverage from the body paint because we're focusing on the body and some is obviously going to hit the tongue. So I let that kind of build up naturally and then I go back and you can see I have the tongue tucked down in the shoe right here and then I just pull apart the side fabric or the sides right here 
and then I focus on that side tongue. You're going to have to bend it and move it a little bit, get some good angles. Um, the camera didn't stay on the shoe too great during this because I was moving around a lot. Um, but just right in here is where I kind of pull right here, you can see, and I just spray down. And again, you're going to want to move the tongue because it's from different angles. So just kind of get all the angles that you can. Again, we're building up coats. This took me about two coats, I think, and you can use the heat gun in between and then work on the other shoe, let it cool down, and then go ahead and hit the other shoe again. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this. It's the same process. And then we'll go ahead and move up to the tongue and get that tongue full on the very top, and we'll get that covered on the patch. When you're doing the tongue at the very top and the patch, don't worry about the paint getting on the patch because we actually need to blend that color onto the patch and the tongue because the patch is a little bit off color and then this just really hits at home so it's all flush and back, back to a better me before I was a B-list celebrity before I started calling bitches bitches so heavily back when you could get a platinum plat without no melody you weren't sweating me one time for my LA sisters one time for my LA hoes lame niggas can't tell them. On this right side here, you can see this is completely done. It's got full coverage. We also went up on the tongue and finished that so it just is a full color, make sure they match. And you can see on the left side here, this is just overspray from when we did the body. So this is just a comparison of a before and after. And we'll go ahead and focus on this left side, but we're gonna go ahead and skip ahead, but this is just to give you a visual. All right, so the next step that I like to take before doing the soles is doing the toe cap here. So we're gonna go ahead and be taping up this line right here to focus on the toe cap all the way to the side, and then we'll probably just put a bag over the upper so we don't hit any of that. If you ask anybody where I live, they point to the hills and say, go all the way up, go all the way up, I'm all the way up, I'm all the way up, nothing can stop me, I'm all the way up. So now we're gonna take the toe cap, it's gonna be labeled as toe cap, shake that up really well as usual, and I'm gonna airbrush this on. Again, you can hand brush this. Any step you can hand brush that I'm airbrushing, it's just easier and it comes out smoother. I would go ahead and strain this. It's a very thin paint. Just the colors that are used to mix this are thinner than the body and the midsole. So go ahead and run this through a strainer and then put it in your airbrush or paint it just to get all those chunks out. I actually don't have a strainer, so you might see me picking at it a little bit, getting chunks out. When my airbrush is messing up, I might pull it back and remove it. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and start airbrushing this. And by now you guys probably guessed it, we're going to be doing light coats this time just with the toe cap paint. You can use a heat gun to expedite the drying process, whether you're hand brushing or airbrushing. But we're going to build this up with about three or four coats or until it's solid and we'll continue from there. Now we'll simply remove the tape just to make sure that the tape didn't pull up any other paint. And sand any areas that are uneven if you need to. Again, once this is removed, we'll go ahead and remove the other tape on the bottom and start on the soles here. Now for another step that we're going to repeat, we're just taping up the midsoles here. You can use an X-Acto knife, but I don't like to because this is a precise part since we're going to be doing a lot of paint and a lot of sealer. And if you don't get that line crisp, it's going to be really hard to correct and get the sealer and paint even. So do it right the first time. Take your time on this. Again, if you're comfortable with the X-Acto knife, you've done it before and you know you can get a sharp line, go for it. I just like doing it by hand. It takes a little bit longer, but I know for sure that it's going to be straight and even. Alright guys, so now that these are taped up and bagged up just like we had done before, I don't need to show you that. I'm going to go ahead and just sand the outside and just get a really good grip before we use the bulldog. So just go ahead, take a sand block like before on the wings, and just do the whole entire outsole on the sides. Guys, now that we put on the Bulldog, again, just like the can says, just follow the instructions on the back of the Bulldog adhesive promoter. I have these propped up because these aren't really sticky to the touch, but it's activated. So the first thing we want to get on there is some paint. In this case, I'm using the Airbrush um, color by Jacquard, the Opaque White. And that's just because it's ready to go. It sprays very nice and it's very durable and flexible. You can use Angelus. Those are the only two I would recommend. But you can hand brush this. Again, airbrush is going to be a lot easier for the sole because there's a lot of coverage especially the first one, you probably want to airbrush to get that smooth cover on the bulldog so you really get a good grip. Hand brushing on bulldog is going to be a little bit weird, so I would probably airbrush this technically. And again, at this point, if you guys have not figured it out, we're going to be doing the same process about two or three times to get a good white base on these. The nice part about the soles and using the bulldog is that we can use the heat gun to speed this up because this paint is durable and the bulldog is definitely going to hang on to that paint and be flexible. 
So just spray it with your airbrush. The only tip I can say is that you want to hit this from every angle again because all those little crevices and all the pieces on the grip, on the sole, all the different angles, those can show if you turn the shoe. So after you spray a coat, kind of turn it and see which way you need to hit it next time and then hit it from a different angle. Do that about two or three times so you get a good full white base coverage. Um, you see me standing up here. That's just so I can move the shoe around and check all the angles and then we're going to hit it two or three more times here. Now that we have a full white base down, we're going to go ahead and use the sole paint and repeat the same process. Again, light coats, we're going to build up about three layers until we get a nice solid base. If you need more coats, you really want this first coat to be pretty solid, but you don't want to do too many coats where it's too heavy because we're going to be going back with the scratch resistant sealer and then the paint again and then the sealer and then the paint. It's just like the instructions on our website for the scratch resistant sealer, but we'll be showing you a couple of steps just so you can get it down if you've never used the product before and you're making this custom. So now after you repeat that process three or four times, you get a nice solid coat. As you can see, it's just a base coat that we're going for, but you want full coverage because now we're going to be switching over to the scratch resistant sealer. Again, you can water this down to get it to flow through your airbrush. You're just going to have to play with it. I don't really have any exact tips for you, but it's just like the wings and the heel tap on the upper. We're going to be doing light to medium coats. You can go a little bit heavier with the scratch resistant sealer, but you don't want to go too heavy. So again, we're going to do about three coats and you can use the heat gun to dry coats in between to speed this up. But you want good coverage. Again, we mainly focus on the sides because that's the part that's not going to have the sole defender on the bottoms, but you still want to hit the bottom. My first two or three coats, I do it all over the entire shoe, including the actual sole. But after I do the paint for the second and the third time, I focus more on the sides and I maybe do like one quick pass on the actual soles because the sole defender is going to be down on there. And the part that we're trying to protect is the sides and the heel and the toe because those are the areas that are going to be exposed and there's no sole defender on it. So when you hit and scrape on those areas, you want those to be protected. So do this process again. I'm going to skip forward, but you're going to do paint sealer paint sealer paint sealer if you don't know what i'm referencing to you can check the link down below in the description and links you to the scratch resistant sealer video again to save you time and i'm not going to go over the whole entire process as there is a video for that just follow that process for the soles and then we're going to go ahead and remove this tape here Alright guys, and once we're done with all of that, I'm sorry about the light again, but again, I really need to see this part because this is the only time I really use an X-Acto knife is when I have a lot of layers built up with scratch resistant sealer and paint. I like to cut that line because since there's so many layers, it makes it easy gap to cover that tape. And then when you peel off your tape, you'll end up peeling off all this hard work that you just did. So this is the only time I really count on this X-Acto knife. So I really need that light so I can see what I'm doing. You may not have the best angle, but again, I'm trying to just get this line really clean. Um, it's just like if you were to cut with tape when you're prepping. Some people do that. It's the same concept here. Okay, so the easiest way i found to do this is actually just lay out the laces on a towel. This towel I use for cleaning up spills, paint, cleaning off brushes, any scratch resistant sealer, spilled ice cream, you can notice all the crap on here. So just get a towel you don't care about or if you have a safe place to do this, and just take the lace and stretch it out and I put something on the end of it and I pull it like this. I'm going to go ahead and take my airbrush and just get this one side and then I'll flip this to get the rest of this and then I'll go ahead and flip the lace over and do it one more time here. So if you guys didn't catch that, what we're doing right now is the laces. I'm just going to show you one part and it's a repetitive process again. We're going to use the body and two thin mix like we did for the sock liner and you can go pretty heavy on the laces again because the laces stay pretty soft if you use enough too thin. Again, refer back to the sock liner. You want to use more too thin than paint just to make sure they're soft and you can use the heat gun to heat set these. You're really only going to need about two coats because the color is pretty close already and you just want to solidify it. The laces are a little bit different than the shoe you'll see at the end, but it makes a perfect look for the shoe. Alright guys, now this next part kind of stinks that we have to do, but the way that these shoes are made, you notice we didn't do a lot of scratch resistance either on these front tabs right here, and that's because the eye stays, which is this part of the shoelace, is too big to fit through there. You'll notice even without painting or you have an original Jordan that's just a regular shoe from the store, 
these barely squeeze through there and they're a little tight. So if you think about putting paint on there and then trying to fit one through there, it's gonna knock the paint off. And if we do more scratch resistant sealer, it is scratch resistant, but it literally does not fit. So it's not the fact that it's scratch resistant, it just has no room and it just pushes it off. So what we actually need to do is flatten these eye stays to make it match this shape a little bit more and slide them through that way and then work them up this way. So what I like to do is I take my first lace and I actually just take some pliers and I just flatten it. Just like that. And again, this is where you want your laces to be pretty soft because if they're still a little stiff, that could even pull some paint off. So just be careful. Don't go super quick how you would normally tie up a shoe. side clocks nigga try to run down and you could catch a shot nigga running through these checks till I pass out pass out shorty give me neck till I pass out I swear to god all I do is cash out and if you ain't a hope get up on my trap house I've been selling cracks is like the fifth grade alright guys now these gold tips here I don't remember the company that I bought these from, but there's another one that I think I got from Angelus, and they're smaller. I like these bigger ones. I don't remember who sells these. I wish I could. I've had these for a while, so I don't recall. But these are the size of them. I just like how big they are. And the way these ones work, I actually use some super glue. But just for now, before I contact the customer, I'm actually going to make sure he's okay with me leaving the shoe like this. But what you'll do is you'll put super glue on there, and you'll work these down. Actually, these might stay. These are pretty tight and just work that down like this over the aglet and then this actually just twists on and secures onto that threading Yeah, yeah. If I got some promise, yeah, yeah. If I got some promise, yeah, yeah. Bottom down to a hundred.